of our visit, Louis Simmons. Hello, folks. Uh, here we are at Westside Barbell. Uh, today, you're going to watch a dynamic day with bands and chains. The three lifters are going to be George Habert, currently who holds a world record at 198 at 650 pounds. Rob Fusner, who has been 700 pounds in a full meet and totaled 2358 in less than 10 meets. And Kenny Patterson, who currently holds three world records and uh, is competing now in the 220s, who recently did 688 pounds. Uh, they're going to be lifting in approximately three weeks at the Arnold Classic, so we'll find out how they do there. Uh, today, you're going to see them do the dynamic day. And then Kenny will demonstrate a little bit of tricep extension with dumbbells on the floor and a little bit of side delt raise. Actually, tonight they'll come back and do a second workout with a little bit more shoulder work and quite a bit of lat work. That's pretty much how they train. They'll train about four to six times a week, the bench press spaceless. Many people here train between 10 and 15 times a week. Um, so uh, I guess that's it. Let's go in and see how they're doing. Kenny Patterson, he right now holds three world records, uh, 275s, 242s, and 220-pound weight class. And we're going to have Rob Fuser, who makes 700 pounds as a lifter. Rob is actually total 23.58. We have George Halbert, who holds a world record at 198 at 650, plus has held world records 242 and 220 as well. You're noticing they'll use a combination of bands and chains. At the top, we're locking out an additional 20 pound, 40 pounds of chain, and the band constitutes um, 45 pounds in the bottom, about 110 pounds in the top. Uh, you notice, again, these all three of these men are tremendous benchers, and you notice the weight they're using. Uh, this day is known as a dynamic day. It's uh, for dynamic strength, quick strength, and reversal strength. So let's watch Rob do some steps. You notice also they train real fast, back to back. Come on, come on, George. Come on. Okay. Now here comes Kenny Patterson. Notice they use one weight. This is called multiple sets. This is also known as interval training. In between each set, they take a prescribed amount of time in between. And then repeat the same effort. Interval meaning rest intervals. Their rest intervals are approximately 45 seconds between sets. This is quite common in track. It's based on European training methods for track, and now uh, we've introduced it in the United States in 1988, and many people are using this method of training. Now they do, they finished a few sets with 255 pounds, now they jumped to 275 bar weight. But remember, you have an additional 40 at the top of the chain plus 110 at the top of the band. Come on, G. Get it. Get it. The bands serve a purpose of kinetic energy. As they're lowering the bar faster than gravity because the band's pulling them downward, 
it builds uh, reversal strength. Actually, it puts strength in the muscle itself and causes one to reverse the barbell. Come on, Kate. Hey. Come on, Hit. Go, Rob. Notice also that there's no psyching up here. This is just pure work. They say the psychic for the meets where it counts. Come on. Hit. The bands and the chains serve a purpose also of accommodating resistance. At the top where everyone's much stronger, they have an additional amount of weight. Actually about 150 pounds on top of the bar weight. Come on! Hit me. Come on, Kenny. Easy. Get it. Got it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. pounds of bar weight. Uh, the reason the bands are on the bar because it almost eliminates the deceleration phase of the barbell. Maximum force is developed in three to four tenths of a second, but by using bands it's prolonged somewhat, we believe, uh, constituting a much stronger lockout. Everyone's stronger at the top, so the barbell should actually move faster at the top, not slow down with, it, with conventional weight. With conventional weight training and no extra resistance for band or chain, you have a deceleration phase. That's common because once the body realizes it's made to lift, it kind of lets up and slows down. But there's no way possibly you can slow down with the addition of band and chain on the bar. Come on, G! Hit it! Also, folks, know the bar path. Bar goes a straight line, not back over the face like it's always been told. The bar should go straight. The straightest line is the shortest distance. It requires very strong arms, upper back, and last line. Easy, Rob. Come on, Bob. Get it. Easy, baby. Get it. Die. Die. All right. Oh, so quick, that bar's re reversed with these fellas. They have tremendous reversal strength. <laughs> constantly use verbal commands by using verbal commands and muscles actually to fire harder as if a man was running track and a gun never went off he wouldn't take off quite as fast as when a gun lets him off go off as a signal to take off well, this is the last set you'll notice it will move just as fast as the first set and actually it moved up 40 pounds in weight force equals mass times acceleration we all learned that in school and seen to forgot it when we picked up a barbell. It's the most important element of strength. Go, baby! 
Come on. 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 Notice now how the bar almost comes out of Kenny's hands when he presses up without that extra amount of resistance. That's what we're after. Acceleration at the end of the lift. That's where you must put out the most force. It's like when a boxer lands a punch. He lands it. At, they talk about landing the, the punch at, uh, or the punch at the end of the punch. That's what counts when it lands on a person's jaw or at the very end of the bench press. You notice hardly any uh, bar deceleration. He jumped 90 pounds. You can't even tell we put 90 pounds on the bar. And this is at the end of the workout. Now they're going to run in and do uh, extension for the tricep. Dumbbell extensions on the floor will be the order of the day. All right, folks, uh, they're going to lay down and do some dumbbell extensions on the floor. The major bench press is the tricep. Larry Pacifico said this 30 years ago, and it's still true. Uh, you'll notice when you take a look at Kenny's arms or Rob's arms or, or uh, George's arms, they have tremendous tricep development. When the arms are very strong, the bar will go in a straight line. If the shoulders are stronger than the arms, the bar has a tendency to fade over the face. By doing that, you're rotating. That's why you have rotator injuries, rotator cuff injuries. You want to press the bar in a straight line. Shoulder distance, no shoulder rotation, cutting down injury to the shoulders. That's very, very important. Notice how the elbows are rolled back. Then a slight kick will start them up. But it works at the tricep muscles on the inside of the elbow, and that's the ones that really do the extension of the arm. Remember, folks, we're not bodybuilding here. We're powerlifting. We're going for maximum absolute strength. Those are 110 pound dumbbells, by the way. Why don't we ask Kenny, the, Kenny's history at Westside Barbell, when he started and uh, so forth. I started when I was 14 years old. Here at Westside Barbell, I was a kid, Portland Blue. First benchman I was in, did 215. Followed 14 years later, 728 at 275, 701 at 242, 688 at 220. Eventually, I'm going to go down to 98 and battle out with George, see what we can do together. When I first came down here, I was the uh, worst bench pressure in the world. I was all chest. Uh, I asked Louie to work with me. He got my arms up. He, he taught me how to use my lats to tuck everything in. When I used to bring the bar out, I was really shaky. Now that I've learned to use my entire body instead of just my pecs, I've got a, I'm nice and tight all the way down and all the way up. Um, when you work out here at Westside, you get all the newest techniques and innovations. Uh, we know we have strength coaches from all over coming here to see what we're doing. What we do is we get the ideas from Louie and then we use them to the best of our needs because everyone's body is a little bit different. Um, some of us work better with bodybuilding type movements. I work a lot better with just pure powerlifting. I don't like to do these assistance exercises like Kenny. I just want to get the work done. I'm, I'm done. I was talking to come to the West Side Barbell by Jerry Obradovich, good friend of mine. Uh, 97, did my first meet, total 1965, elite, elite total in the 275s, uh, just did some meets and here in two, 2000, November 2000, went to WPC World, total 2358 there, and uh, been 700 in a full meet, been 688, 688 in a full meet. In, uh, just in a few years of training. Even though Kenny and George are right now bench press faces, I want it known that these two lifters are elite lifters. Kenny's actually total 2,039 in the full meet. Um, so it's, it, we're, although they do specialize now, they're trying to put up some bench records that no one will ever catch. And then the fact that Rob can bench 700 pounds in total 2358 is down to basically at 25 years old. And I think the rest is uh, the rest and the best is to come. And Westside would like to say something to the entire powerlifting community. We're talking about each other. Stay off the internet and train. Quit making excuses. Just go to the meets and do the big weights. Our fellows don't even like to lift in uh, Columbus, Ohio at the Arnold classic but we have to because it's 10 minutes away and everyone wants to compete against them but they would much rather go to Daytona or Maine or Texas anywhere outside Columbus we feel if we go out of town we're the underdogs anyone can perform in our own hometown but can you perform 
on strange equipment in a strange city. That's what makes you a power lifter. George Halbert's 683-pound bench at 198 wasn't the only amazing...